The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. Sports. All right, here we go. The Bulls have the Raptors at the Madhouse after a disastrous, disgusting, despicable, embarrassing. Any more adjectives, Case, I can do on I that? I think you nailed them. Okay. Uh, that it was, was o- bad. Did you say bad? I didn't even say bad. Bad's bad. Bad, bad. Bad sounded not enough. No, that actually... The other words are too sprinkly. They're a little too cute. Bad is what they were. Bad is what the Bulls are. On their opening night, Wednesday, they had a players-only meeting only minutes after the season started. Not a good sign. No, that's not good. Those usually happen, you know, after the all-star break or something like that where they're not, you know, listen, guys, we've got we to make a run here to the end to get to the playoffs. They did it after the first game, and we'll find out what happened with that with the Raptors at the Madhouse tonight. You, you also, you're letting your PTSD show there because the Bulls have had a number of players-only meetings over the last few years, and so your line of thinking is, well, it shouldn't happen until after the All-Star break. It shouldn't happen, period. It shouldn't happen at all. <laughs> you don't hear a lot of reports of the Golden State Warriors having a lot of players-only meetings. Yeah. Denver Nuggets didn't, get it, didn't do that a lot last year. Let's see, Chiefs, Eagles. No, nope. I don't remember that. No, nope, no. Nope. Yeah. And they had to get in there and say, hey, guys, remember we're getting paid millions of dollars to play basketball? Let's try to do better. I think that's what they probably said to each other. <laughs> probably not. Do you think they about how grateful they were? Like, guys, we make all this money. Let's go out there and have fun. Yeah, let's do it, guys. We'll find out tonight. The Blackhawks are at the champs of the Vegas Golden Knights tonight. And game one of the World Series tonight, D-backs Rangers. Yes, I'm going for the underdogs. Why not the D-backs? Why not, why not give them a chance? I don't know. Are you going to put money on it? I think I will. Go to my DraftKings account and uh, you know, throw, a little, throw some dollars down Put like it. a large sum of money on it? Um, I like to bet smaller these days mm-hmm. or with a baby. Why is that? Because you're broke? Well, you're broke ass? Broke. Uh, a, a baby now has mm-hmm. changed my perspective. But you wager a lot of money. You win a lot of money. Could be more stuff for the baby. I'll tell you more a... More ointments and diapers and whatever else she needs. Oh, these things that babies need. You know. Yeah. Uh, as I've said before in the movie The Color of Money, Paul Newman says at one point to Tom Cruise, money won is so much sweeter than money earned. Yes. So bet a lot of money on the World Series. Bet for your Arizona Diamondbacks, a squad you've rode with for a long time now. <laughs> I wanted the Phillies. Happy wife, happy life. Megan's from Philadelphia, but hey. Having a good time all the time. That's right. That's my motto. Um, I still want to stand up for the Lamont girls high school volleyball team that is not allowed to play in the playoffs because they played one extra game by accident. Now, it's not their fault at all. It's their athletic director, it's their coaches, everybody above that scheduled 36 games instead of 35. They won 27 of them, by the way. And these girls can't go to the Illinois playoffs now that have worked so hard. They're super talented, and they can't do it. They've appealed it, and they said, hey, uh, it's still not happening from the IHSA. Listen, there's parents out there with older kids that understand this stuff better than I do. My child is still very young. And I get both sides where someone is saying, well, it's not fair if they did it because our team couldn't play another game. But I guarantee this sounds shady. I've heard also that a boys basketball team in the area did the same thing years back, and they did let them play in the playoffs. So Hmm. is it not against women's volleyball? Probably. You know know what I think you should do? I have a brilliant idea for you. Tell me. You need, in the same way that you protested the Bears, you need to have this same energy for women's sports. It's only right we're in 2023. You yourself could do a lot to, to help empower women. You need to show up to the, I believe it's the Class 4A, I could be wrong on that, but the Class 4A regional volleyball playoffs with the same sign that you had outside Soldier Field that said, don't go in, you need to do the same for a high school girls volleyball. When is it? You know when it is? I think it's this weekend. Oh, boy. I, I may what have a the, conflict. It, it's, look, it's good that we don't know when the high school women's volleyball <laughs> playoffs are, but if somebody can let us know when Lamont should have been playing, Brian will go down there. I'll do it. I'll do it because I'm I'm so behind these girls and getting missed out on the playoffs, and some people say they decide, well, you got to follow the rules. I'm surprised how many people are backing up the state organization in this and not the girls that, you know, all the grinding and the practices and they're waiting their whole life to get here to the playoffs, and they waiting can't their, play. They're 16. They're not waiting. They're, I mean, waiting their whole life is not that long. you got to start playing volleyball when you're three months old to get good at it. <laughs> you got to start training. What, you just spiking volleyballs into your daughter's face right you gotta now? you got to start hitting them in the head. they got to get used to it. Yeah, no, got, it's good for them. got to develop calluses on their forehead. <laughs> Listen, I'm very upset about it, uh, but hey, uh, if anybody is a part of that school, the Lamont, you know, give us more information about it, I'm totally fine with trying to get out there to the game. I'm I'm in. A weird story. You, ever, you remember Blake Martinez? No. He was a linebacker for the Packers and the Giants and the Raiders, and he ended up making $5 million selling Pokemon cards. Respect. And 
he retired. Yeah. He said, I'm done with football now. I'm doing great. Well, now he's attempting an NFL comeback because he's been banned from popular Pokemon marketplaces as he's been accused of selling counterfeit stuff. This is a huge thing. Is it? Because my TikTok feed is a mix of skateboarding videos and grown men opening baseball cards. Okay. And so (laughs) I get wrapped up in a lot of drama about, like, the, the people will do these things called case breaks, unrelated to my name, where they'll live stream themselves opening cards and certain people will pay to get players from certain teams. Yeah. But if there's a really good card in there, the guys opening the boxes will hide the cards so that they can keep it and sell it themselves and profit off of that. Interesting. There's a ton, a ton of drama in the card collecting community. Well, this explains it. Possibly what's going on here. Is it uh, uh, Whatnot was the mm-hmm. place, okay? So they didn't make specific allegations against him, but they permanently banned his page while refunding customers money. That sounds like something wrong happened. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't sound good. After a comprehensive investigation, uh, we've decided to permanently remove the seller from our platform, including individual employees. And they say we've refunded all buyers impacted by the infractions. Um, if you believe you were infected by it on his streams, please submit details to them. And I guess he was doing what you were saying, swapping more expensive packs with cheaper yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the allegation is. I don't think he's been accused of it, but I think he's going back to football now. Yeah, because like baseball cards and Pokemon cards, they're not like they were when you were growing up. Everything is different. Like it's all it's all complicated. I can't imagine. Somebody like you going to the store, let's say you're buying baseball cards for your nephew. Yep. You wouldn't know what to buy because it's not just the baseball cards anymore. Everything is its own pack and division and class. So it's very easy to fool people who don't know what's going on. He made $5 million. Not not bad. He also made $28 million in his career playing for the Packers, the Giants, and Raiders. But he's going back to the NFL. Maybe he blew through all that money and the Pokemon money Uh, made him crazy. When you talk about money won, Pokemon money, that's the sweetest you can buy. I can't imagine how much of a jerk I would be if I made $5 million (laughs) selling Pokemon cards. (laughs) You'd be unbearable. I would be insufferable. You could not hang out with me. (laughs) I'd be so good. Okay, and then Sunday Night Football, Bears in primetime at the Chargers. It's going to be an epic game. Tyson Bajan playing because Justin Fields still has a dislocated thumb. Let's remember what Tyson did last week, okay? Bajan has to run. Still looking. A little pump. And Bajan going to coast out of bounds. Foreman up the middle. Backing his way in. That's a touchdown. Here's the play fake. Hoyer over the middle. Deflected and intercepted. Right into the hands of Tremaine Edmonds. Good fake by Bajan. Rolling out his tight end Mercedes Lewis all the way down inside the five agent to give to Foreman Foreman plowing into the end zone for a Chicago touchdown his second rushing touchdown of the day agent on the run throws on the sideline the catch made Foreman with blockers in front he's got a convoy of bears and Foreman throws it short Foreman with the catch Foreman to the end zone for the touchdown and the first long pass of the day is 15 yards and it's intercepted picked off by Jalen Johnson Johnson untouched for the touchdown and it'll be a good topic of conversation all week long here in this great city of Chicago 30 to 12 Tyson Bajit and the Chicago Bears the Q101 morning crew on Q 101. That's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Time for the weekend Q101. Everything going on this weekend. Now, obviously, obviously, tonight's the night at the Cubby Bear, the Q101 Halloween Bash pop up. It's our Halloween party. It's our gift to you. It's free, but it's first come, first serve, and that can get a little tricky. So make sure you get there early. Doors are at seven for this event, and the show starts around eight. You got Panic at the Costco, and you got Weathers performing. And then Weathers will perform as Green Day for one set. First 101 people in line get the Q101 Halloween exclusive T-shirt and then also a spectacular Q101 Halloween bash sticker. Um, that, that might be all it is. I know a lot of people are asking we're going to sell those online, but listen, we'll, we'll see what we get through once those 101 are gone. Maybe on Monday or Tuesday, we'll see if it gets to aisle 101. Yeah, unfortunately, I think we literally made 102 shirts. I think we made one for Kenzie and then one for the one, first 101 people there. Because my girlfriend texts me, she goes, I'm getting a shirt, right? And I go, I don't, I wouldn't count on it. Yeah, I don't know. They are amazing. You can see them. Of course, the picture right now of me and Kenzie, well, me without one, because I'm the person that gets there after the 101 in the mm-hmm. picture uh, at Facebook, our Q101 Facebook page. Page, but it's going to be a blast tonight. $500 in the costume contest for first place, 200 and 100 for second and third even. This is a party at the Cubby Bear. 
and uh, be there at the Q101 Halloween Bash pop up all the information at Q101.com. Now, what else is going on today in the weekend Q101 case? A lot of concerts this weekend. Like you said, Weathers will obviously be there with the Cubby Bear tonight. Miss Lauren Hill and the Fugees. They are at the UC tomorrow night celebrating 25 years of the miseducation of Lauren Hill. I am on the fence. I still kind of want to go to that show. That's the one. So it got canceled for a while. Yeah. So the deal with Lauren Hill is that she announces a lot of tours. She's on the hypothetically on the road a lot. Yeah. A lot of Lauren Hill shows also get canceled or she shows up three hours after she's supposed to go on stage. It's you. You're buying a ticket much like the way you bet on DraftKings when you buy a Lauren <laughs> Hill ticket. You don't know exactly what you're going to get, and it's a shame because if she was 10% less weird, she would be the greatest artist of our generation. Also, isn't one of the Fugees going to jail for life for like a Ponzi scheme? TBD. <laughs> TBD. It hasn't been determined yet. Right now, Miss Lauren Hill and the Fugees are on the road. Okay. And can, that, can that guy be performing? Yeah, I mean, look. It's not was, Wyclef Jean. It's the no, other guy. Uh, Praz. Okay, I can't remember. I remember this Wyclef. Thing, it's, it's, you remember Lauren Hill and Wyclef, not Praz. That's all I who's remember. Who's going to jail for life, possibly. Possibly for some kind of weird fraud scheme. My understanding is he will be there. He is, of course, the least important member of the Fugees. Wow. It's just the reality <laughs> of it, you know. But, well, let's let send him away for life. Who cares? <laughs> if he did something wrong. That's cold hearted. Send him away for life. <laughs> it's something like 20 years. No, it's, it sucks. It's, it's not lot. good. Yes. And then the 1975, obviously, we've been talking about them all week. What a year they've had in Chicagoland specifically. They do Twisted Christmas last year. They headline Lollapalooza this year. Now they are doing the Allstate Arena this Sunday night. And if you can't get a ticket to that, you probably also couldn't get a ticket to Faye Webster a really nice sort of indie singer-songwriter type. Huh. She's at the Riv. That show is sold out. I also want to mention, if you're looking for comedy this weekend, Maria Bamford, one of my favorite comedians, is at the Den Theater on Friday and Saturday. And the Blue Man Group is what? doing Halloween performances. We talked a lot about the Blue Man Group this week. They are back, and they are getting spooky this weekend. You're my boy, Blue! <laughs> I had to get an old school reference in somewhere. I, I, listen, I've seen the Blue Man Group three times. I've never seen the Halloween, uh, the, the Halloween thing. It's always entertaining and incredible. Yeah, so, they're the best. Yeah, they're, they're, they you know, I peek behind the curtain real quick. So we talked about the Blue Man Group earlier this week and how I would leave a funeral for a family member to go to the Blue Man Group if I had tickets. We were not knocking the Blue Man Group. We were merely confused. And I, I love, I love our listeners and our callers. I had somebody call in, and no hate if this guy's listening. Somebody called in. I give him the 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 whole spiel. Oh, hey, you want to one? You know what's your name? Where are you calling from? And he just he goes, "You guys could never do what the Blue Man Group does." And then he hung up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Wait a minute, we weren't hating on the Blue Man Group. Yeah. That wasn't the point of this." By the way, you're right. Uh, you, you didn't have to hang up. You could, could have said, good day, sir, afterward. <laughs> it's fine. They are incredible. It's been in Chicago for like 20 years, somewhere like that. Up on Halstead, they were at that theater. I'm not sure where the new one, if they're at the same theater. I think they're at the same spot. Okay, that's a good spot. It's Because it's a nice, cool, uh, very um, vibey theater. It's very comfortable. It's very small. I don't know these words I'm using, but whatever. So that's part of the weekend Q101. Yeah, what, what do you have going on, Brian? Uh, well, listen, I want to give a shout-out. I'm afraid to give a shout-out to this because it's kind of my private pizza spot that is one of the best in Chicago, and I don't want it getting ruined by too many people going there. That is so hurtful. Just so everybody knows, Brian doesn't want you to ruin his pizza spot. <laughs> but Robert's Pizza over here in Streeterville is one of the best pizza places in Chicago, and it's actually been voted in the country recently in some polls. So they're not hurting. Trust me. They're busy. And the pizza, the sauce, the bread, it's so good. So they're having a Robert's a howl Oween costume pet parade on Saturday from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. So it's, in, it's hard to find in a way if you don't know the Streeterville neighborhood, which is kind of just a bunch of high rises right before Navy Pier. But you'll find it with uh, GPS if you want to go. Your, your uh, whole thing is that you have this private pizza spot and it's in Streeterville in downtown Chicago. Yeah, but it's hidden because it's on the slip. So it's on Lake Michigan, but there's a, there's a little water slip that comes in there. And there's if there's a target on Illinois and people just you don't see it from the street. Hmm. So you kind of got to be in the know. Gotcha. You sound really cool talking about it. <laughs> so they're having a special dog costume pet parade and contest. The contest will feature the winner for three different costume categories. Scariest, cutest and most creative. Ah. Humans will have a chance to compete, too, so don't be shy. Come dress to win with your dogs. A professional pet photographer will be on site to capture the photos you can keep from years to come. And I am telling you, that's some of the best pizza in town that no one talks about as far as when they say best categories. Robert's Pizza. Uh, check it out. Um, all, all the other stuff, of course, at Q101.com. 
Case makes a great blog, The Weekend Q101. All this stuff and more is on there for you. Takeaways from today's show and the whole week, 312-591-8300. Text them in. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. That's Q101. Lauren's coming in. Take you through the rest of this day. Get us closer to tonight's Q101 Halloween pop-up at the Cubby Bear. It is free, so make sure you are there. First come, first serve for the band Weathers playing, and they will also do a set as Green Day for Halloween. Costume contest, 500 bucks on the line for first place, 200, 100, and 101 T-shirts. These are special limited edition Q101 Halloween T-shirts for the first 101 in line. And uh, me and Kenzie will be hosting. Case will be out there as well. Um, hosting tonight. So let's have a let's have a blast. Let's have a party tonight. 7 o'clock, doors open. 7 o'clock. Make sure you're there. Also, in a couple hours, 11.30, Kenzie's going to be on Windy City Live on ABC7 with Ryan Shiverini. So uh, make sure you watch that, too. Check out our girl on I, TV. I, she does great on there. I really enjoy that she's, show. Yeah, do it for years. She's awesome. So uh, check out that. And that's going to be the reveal of her costume that she's going to wear tonight because she's going to wear it all day. That's seems, kind of, oh, seems uncomfortable. Oh, it does. Because they I mean, it's a lot of makeup and a professional Halloween costume job. And then you got to wear it all day. You wouldn't do that. Oh, never. Nope. Not me. But I'll announce my costume at 7 o'clock when doors open at the <laughs> Cubby Bear. You don't need to make an announcement, Brian. It's a costume. People should tell what you are. This is me. <laughs> all right. Takeaways from you guys. By the way, make sure you listen tomorrow morning, 8 to 10. Uh, Brian and Kenzie, uh, the throwback. So we'll be on 8 to 10 a.m. as we always are on Saturday mornings. Uh, Case, what do you got for takeaways here? Kelly in Northwest Indiana checked in, and she said what we're all thinking, which is that Brian will surely be looking into where, buy, where to buy a whore horse this weekend. A whore horse. I'll be in that wormhole on my phone. Oh, I bet. I can't wait to see your search history. Uh, Alex checked in takeaway. I can't wait to pick up the new Courtney Love albums that Kenzie announced earlier, Deep Hole and Holiday Hole. <laughs> Uh, those are available. It's like a double album. It's like uh, Use Your Illusion by Guns N' Roses. <laughs> She's doing two. <laughs> I got to read one more from Double Features, Mike. Uh, Takeaway. The Kool-Aid Man comes through Melissa Etheridge's window. <laughs> and World War II was a sequel. It's true. Well, yeah, Hollywood doesn't have any ideas anymore. <laughs> all they do is just all these remakes, all these sequels. Oh, God. Get a new war. Oh, there's so many good ones here. Kevin also checked in from 219. You can get yourself a prostitute, but the second you show them a mini horse, it's a no-go. I don't recognize this country anymore. <laughs> a damn shame. It's been a blast this week. We love you guys. Thanks so much. Again, tomorrow morning, 8 to 10, the throwbacks. Uh, always the podcast is available to you on demand at q101.com and anywhere you get your podcast, the Morning Crew, Brian and Kenzie podcast. And tonight, the Cubby Bear. We'll see you at 7. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101.